Hey, what's up, Reefers? This video is a long time coming. It has been a while since we've talked about this little 10 gallon budget nano tank, and there's a lot to talk about. As you know, recently I shut down the 45 gallon tank and I moved all the corals to this 10 gallon tank as well as the 20 gallon mangrove tank. So this video, we're gonna talk about what changed and also to continue answering some of the frequently asked questions that I get about this setup right here. And that includes how effective is handling the back refugium, what's the most important purchase and whether the light is good enough to grow corals, anemones or SPS. So it begins. All right, reefers. Well, if you know me, you know I have a tendency to ramble when it comes to tank update. So I apologize in advance. I'm gonna talk about general update on this system first, and then I'm gonna field all those questions near the end of the video. So like I mentioned earlier, this tank inherited a lot of the corals from the 45 gallon tank, mostly the Zoa Garden, as well as some of the pieces I really like. For example, the uh, Sunkiss Bounce from um, Daniel Tank Addict and as well as like the fat dendros, etc. Basically, we'll, we'll go through it, we'll go through it. Let's start from here, shall we? I have not really talked about how I ripped this apart from the 45 and transplanted them here. I think I'm gonna talk about it in a later video because it's a pretty interesting process as well. But these guys have been in this tank for close to four weeks, almost five weeks now, and they seem to be really happy. They did not miss a beat at all. And um, I do see that certain zoas is starting to morph a little bit kind of fluorescent differently compared to when it was back in the 45 gallon tank and that's really interesting to me whether it's due to the nutrient in the water or the light the aqua Knight a029 that's over the tank right now and we're going to talk a little bit more about this light near the end of this video so basically these are two big pieces of rock i started off like a little frag plug and to spread throughout the rock. And I was able to create a couple frags and actually have some of them here as well. I really like this look currently we have in the 10 gallon tank. So I think I'm just gonna leave these old garden here. And with the new tank that by the time you're watching this, I should be setting up down in the basement. I'll probably grow them out from frag plug. And it looks like some sexy shrimp probably walked all over these. It's because these are the space monsters. Uh, that got closed up and I saw the sexy shrimps running around a little bit. So for the most part, the Zoas are happy, as well as the Jawbreaker. Look at these guys right here. I grew these out from a dime size maybe like a year ago, I think a year and a half ago, and now they are big. And we're starting to see some green as well. There's actually another baby down there, and there's another baby over on that side. Now sliding over here, uh, the Magician is probably one of my favorite pally because of like the details they have in the center of the polyp. So we got uh, frag right here and if we swing over to the back side we got a nice little almost mini colony happening over here as well which is really good the sunny d is getting choked out by i think these are devil's armor uh, the devil's armor i feel like has lost some color uh, since the early days so hopefully being in this tank it may kind of like get some of the color back or whatnot we'll see what happens other chaos is looking good as always, I was able to make quite a few frags for, for the other chaos and I was able to uh, sell and trade some of them uh, locally. The sour apple is also doing really well. Um, these King Midas has been kind of on and off for me. Like sometimes they're happy and the polyp is like open up and pretty large, but more often than not, uh, they have been close like this, which is kind of odd. But beyond the King Midas, for the most part, the Pallies and Zoas has been really happy in both the 45 gallon tank as well as this uh, 10 gallon budget nano tank. So sliding over here, I kind of messed up with the A-can. I placed it a little bit too close to the fat dendrils. So as you can see, like it got burned right there and you see some skeleton. I already moved it away, but it looks like it's not enough space. So I kind of kind of put it even more this way. But at the same time, it's almost touching the um, sun, sun kiss bands as well. But I feel like they're kind of playing nice, right? I feel like they're, they're kind of just overlapping. It seems to be okay. So it may just be the fat dendro that's um, stinging the A-can. So I'll be moving it over a little bit. So the frost bond has been doing consistently well in this tank. And recently it has really been exploding. And I honestly, honestly, I'm not being paid to say this. Uh, Brightwell amino acid. I really feel like once I started dosing this, a lot of coral just kind of went on overdrive. And... Um, it's been fantastic. This is also interesting as well. So these Xenia came from the 45 gallon tank. I know for the longest time I was struggling to get Xenia to pulse. But if you look in the 45 gallon tank video right now, those Xenia just like nonstop. The interesting part is that that particular colony of Xenia has always been in a low flow area, but it never pulsed for me. But ever since I switched over to ATI Coral Essential Pro, um, it just started pulsing. So I feel like maybe it's missing certain trace elements in the water. And once the Xenia sends that trace element, it started pulsing to get the nutrient through its polyp so it can absorb it. But again, this is strictly speculation. So just take it for what it's worth. Speaking of dosing, we're gonna get into that as well. I'm gonna change things up here. But let's slide over here to follow up on all the corals. 
The Kryptonite Candy Cane is doing really well in this tank. Uh, it's fat and happy and starting a split, which is I'm really happy to see. Coming in here over here, this is probably not a good thing to see. Uh, this is the Fat Head Dendro touching. Another little frag of um, Kryptonite Candy Cane probably stinging each other. So I need to kind of like move this guy out. It's kind of like stuck in this little area. I can't really walk out because of how packed it is. So I'm probably gonna move it maybe over here on the back or just move this guy to the 20 gallon mangrove tank. That's probably the move. My green stop hollow from the drop off tank, I saved a frag because I really like the strand. It's really bright with nice white center. Grows really well, so we got that going. I also got another frag of this as well as the Dave Stano tank frag of GSP in the 20 gallon mangrove tank. And over here we have the Outron, a Favia. Thank you guys for the uh, proper ID. I wasn't sure what this is. It's uh, doing really well and getting a little aggressive. It's sending out some of these um, uh, sweeper tentacles. And sliding over here, we have a unnamed bounce mushroom that just got to like a ginormous size. In a chat among a few local reefers, we've been joking calling this like the dumpster bounce or the Oscar bounce because it's not the prettiest bounce mushroom, but it is a bounce mushroom nonetheless. So in general, the corals are doing really well. Um, I was pretty nervous putting all these rocks in there because I'm adding a lot of um, unknown into this tank in terms of like load and whatnot. But so far, the tank did not skip a beat. Actually, no, I lied, I lied. It, it skipped a little bit because like, remember the cyanobacteria? This showed up, this showed up and I kind of expected it. I expected some sort of spikes because I know that with these rocks, it's gonna be die-offs in a new environment and it's gonna introduce some uh, excess nutrient. And sure enough, cyanobacteria started showing up. But it's okay, um, it's been here for about a week or two and it's been isolated in this area, probably due to the low flow. But the interesting thing is that I always see some sexy shrimp just on the patch of cyanos. I wonder if they're kind of like picking at it and eating it or something, which is interesting. But so far the cyano has been just in this area. Well, if it ever starts spreading out here, I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive in terms of um, doing water change to keep the nutrient down. Uh, if it gets too bad, I may just do um, a course or two courses of the uh, uh, chemically uh, to just knock them out because these are bacteria and chemically can't kind of target these guys. Now this kind of ties in to the uh, hang on back refugium, whether it's effective or not, because I've been using GFO. So let's start answering some of these uh, frequently asked questions that I get uh, in Instagram DMs. A lot of you guys slide into my Instagram DM and I try my best to get back to you ASAP, uh, but sometimes it's just tough with life. So when I get a lot of questions that's similar, I'd like to pop them in the video as well. Uh. So one of the popular questions about this build is whether the refugium built in the hang on the back, I think this is Aqua Clear 70, is effective or not. In my case, it was not. Probably because the light I got sucks. Uh, this is a light I got from Amazon for about like 15 bucks. Uh, it's supposed to be a grow light. I mean, it grows pink and got a little bit of blue in there, but it's really low wattage. It's just, it's just not a strong light. And I feel like that's the majority of the issues. So the macro algae in the hang on the back refugium never really grow, it's just kind of there. I just kind of left it there as well. But um, I do see hair algae once in a while. I did have to scrape the glass once this week. In the past, usually I'll go like maybe two weeks or three weeks before I have to scrape the glass. So that's also when I know um, I have excess nutrient. I get a little hair algae on the glass, and especially that I get cyanobacteria. So in my case, instead of relying on macroalgae here that is not really growing, I just toss a bag of GFO. Uh, I gave the macroalgae a chance to grow. Right, and before I toss GFO, because otherwise it's not gonna be fair. As I put GFO in there, it sucks up all the phosphate and it strip away whatever the macroalgae needs to grow. So they're kind of like competing with each other, but GFO works well for me, so I just kind of left in there. I could just pull the macroalgae out, but they're not hurting anything. I and mean, I'm sure they're doing something, just not enough. But I just kind of left it in there. So in my particular setup, the refugium is not too successful. Uh, it's the GFO, and if I have my way, I may either run GFO or the Chemi Clean Blue. I think there's little packs for nanos that contains GFO, um, carbon, and some of the other stuff. Now, on the flip side of the coin, I have people reaching out saying that they've done the exact same build. They've sectioned off a refugium and it grows macroalgae like a champ. And that's totally reasonable because like they may be using a different light and they may give um, macroalgae a chance to really establish themselves. Different ways to skin the cats. And in my case, um, macroalgae unfortunately did not really work out. So I'm relying on GFO and water change. Now, another really popular question I get is how do I still like this Aqua Knight A029? Can I grow corals under it? Can I grow acroporas under it? Can I grow an anemone under it? Um, so I've been using this light ever since the beginning of this tank built. And you've seen uh, all the stuff that I was able to grow under this light. 
I still really, really like this lights. I actually have the uh, upgraded version, the A0, um, A030 downstairs. I've never put that over this tank. Um, they're essentially the same light, uh, just a little bit better user in the, user interaction. They have actual button, et cetera. Um, but for the most part, it's the same thing. As you can see, this light can definitely grow corals with no problem. We got softies, we got LPS. Um, okay, I take that back slightly. SPS, uh, I don't know. Uh, the, I got a Monty Cap, Green Monty Cap that was like stuck here. It's not really grow, did not really die, just kind of holding steady. I have not tried Acropora uh, under this light. However, I did have people reaching out saying that they were able to grow Acropora under this light with no issue at all. Um, so take it for what it's worth. Um, I think for the beginner and intermediate corals that does not require highlighting, absolutely absolutely no problem and i've had like bubble tip anemone under this light as well if it comes to more light demanding uh, anemones like the um, redderies or the magnificent anemones you may have a problem uh, but for bubble tip and stuff like that should be no issue another main concern is the penetration um, some of you guys reach out with like taller tanks uh, in those cases uh, i'm not too sure but shallow tank like this no problem at all um, i still really like this light so another popular question I get is like, am I dosing anything? Uh, so I was dosing the Tropic Marins all for Reef. Basically, it's a single dosing solution that has like a balanced equality, calcium and trace elements. So I've been dosing that for a while until it started crystallizing in my dosing line pretty consistently for whatever reason. Um, so I dose it a couple times a day. So I thought that should keep the things flowing in the, uh, the tube, the dosing, the dosing tubes. However, that was not the case. I often find things like the solution hardened in the tube uh, to the point that I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. Especially since I don't really have any SPS in this tank. Um, LPS can definitely benefit from the um, alkalinity and calcium and magnesium, etc. But since it's such, such a low demand tank, I just pretty much took the um, doser off maybe two months ago, and I've just been hand dosing it instead. Now, seeing how successful um, the 45 gallon tank was with the ATI um, Essential Pro, I plan to pretty much set the same dosing system up because now it's freed up. I got a 45 gallon. Um, once I take the 45 gallon down, I don't need the doser anymore. I may set it up here and just run those, um, just dose those. Not so much for the alkalinity, but more for the trace elements because seeing how happy like the Zini is and other corals are once I started dosing um, the ATI Essential Pro, I feel like just more complete in terms of the trace elements. Not saying the awful reef is not good. It is good, but I was just having issue with it crystallizing in the line. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have the same issue. If you do, let me know. Or if you know some way to get around it, let me know as well. Maybe I'm just not dosing enough. So for dosing, at the moment, I'm just hand dosing off a reef right here from Tropic Marin, solid product. But I'm gonna switch over to ATI um, Essential Pro simply because I have everything set up and I did not have issue with things uh, crystallizing or hardening the, um, the dosing tube. Another really popular question I get is like, pretty broad actually is like do you have any general advice for someone who's trying to do a nano tank similar to this kind of piecing out all the equipment themselves uh for me invest in a auto top off system uh i know it's it's an investment uh there is about like 100 bucks but they totally totally worth it uh because like imagine this if you have a small tank like this as water evaporates the salt stay in the system right so your salinity goes up as your salinity swings, everything swings along with it. So you, the one, one, number one thing, keep temperature steady, keep the salinity steady, and you're on your way to success. Uh, for me, I'm a huge fan of the XP Aqua Pros, um, as well as the Smart ATO. They all have like a small little optical sensor. And this particular setup, it fits right underneath one of these, uh, the, I think it's like it fits right under the slide or like a little bit over. It just tucks away neatly. And it's really consistent, um, really precise, love them and keeps everything steady. Actually, it doesn't have to be even be like that because um, I was talking to Miss Average Reefer. You, you guys still remember her? Um, she actually went a different route. There were all these uh, really, really cheap auto top off system that's gravity fed. Basically, it's a little plastic piece right here. You can like kind of like screw onto your uh, filter or your tank and basically just fill out a soda bottle and you just kind of like turn it upside down and screw it in and that's pretty much it. As water, as water drains, it just automatically dumps some fresh water in. Smart. Um, I think it's, it's like 15 bucks or something like that um, and supposedly works really well as well. 
Uh, not as clean, however, it gets the job done, especially if you're going on vacation. So definitely check out, check that out. Auto top off system. Besides the auto top off system, I think the other thing that I did well in this system is to just jam pack the hang on the back filter with Marine Pure Spheres. All right, let me see if we can get a light on it. Now it does not have to be Marine Pure Spheres like these guys right here. It's basically any of these are really porous biomedia, kind of like um, Pine Matrix or Brightwell bricks and whatnot. And I'm a big fan of going overboard in terms of like these kind of biomedia, just creating space for uh, bacteria to live in, where there's a uh, bacteria film outside or bacteria within the media, etc. But however, in a tank this small, you're not gonna get the denitrifying ones because like, um, I feel like water just pass through these media. There's not enough like dead space in the middle to get those like uh, denitrating bacteria. However, I'll take these kind of bacteria as well. These will break down ammonia nicely. And I think it's actually the nitrite that is like the serious fish killer. And just like my Reef Sensei Telegram says, um, bacteria is seriously overlooked in this hobby at the moment, but I think things are changing. And the last thing I wanna say about this kind of system is that, you know, um, this system can be as complicated or as simple as you want. Um, it could be simple simply because the water volume is so small that any water change you do will make a big impact. Uh, if something looks a little off, just do a water change. Usually when I do water change, I take out almost like this much water. I'll say that's maybe like 25%. And when you do a 25% water change, usually fix a lot of issue. And who is this right here? What's going on? Time to eat, what did you cook? Steak. <laughs> Steak? Broccoli. All right, well, you hurt my boss. I guess it's time to go eat. Well, uh... Yay! <laughs> Sexy baby. Okay, okay. She keeps trying to pull the camera down. I'm like, no, 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 we're not doing that. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this update. The next update is going to be insane. Um, it will involve taking down a 45 gallon tank completely, getting the new tank, which is in the bit. Well, hurting it's my back. Hurting her back. By the time you're watching this, the new tank, the 135 gallon tank, is going to be in the basement already. And we also got to talk about how I broke down a 150 and gave it away. Oh, by the way, I also have to talk about the 20 gallon mangrove tank, which I did not talk about on this channel at all. As you can see, a lot of things going on. If you want to keep in touch, be sure to subscribe to this channel. No one cared. Oh, wait, I got to do the ending. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Shit. Really quick one. All right, let me try this. I'll see you guys next I'll see you guys next time. I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12.30 p.m. Ciao, bye. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Eh? good. Double the power. <laughs> I like your shirt, by the way. Thank you. <laughs>